Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Learn How with Pacific Angler. Today we're going to the dark side. We're going to be looking at how I set up a leaderboard uh, for fly fishing with beads. This is something that we've developed over the last eight or nine years of guiding on the Squamish. Uh, it's been out of necessity and it's not exactly purest fly fishing, but when you are fishing the Squamish in negative five degree weather and your hands are cold and you're trying to fumble around with beads, we found that this is the most effective way to quickly switch and deal with tangles. Um, the concept came about uh, from actually gear fishing. A lot of advanced float fishermen are going to use a leaderboard just like this with clasps and swivels to be able to change out their winter steelhead presentations really quickly. We looked at that and said, why can't we do that with fly rods? Um, there are a couple materials that we use to make this happen. And the first one is a hook snap. Um, these hook snaps, funnily enough, are usually designed to clasp onto flies. Now, I don't really like it for that application. I feel it adds a little bit of bulk to the fly as well as something the fish can see attached to the front of the fly. But when we're attaching it to the back end of a tippet, it makes a perfect clasp that can clasp into a tippet ring or a swivel. So let's take a look at the rig. F for hooks, we want to use a hook that is not flashy, nor a hook that's really heavy. If the hook is heavy, it's gonna weigh down the bead, and one of the great characteristics of beads for imitating salmon eggs is the fact that they have neutral buoyancy. They really act like a real egg when drifting down the stream. They're heavy, but they will float with current. So the hook that I like to use is always a drab hook, not silver, not red, always a copper or a black. And one of our favorites is the Tiemco 249 SP. It comes in black and copper and both are great. We fish this in a size 10 or 8. It's a barbless hook so it saves you from again fumbling with cold hands and pliers as well as the hook gap is really nice and large so you get a nice firm hook set. Up from there we slide on the bead. Beads come in a bunch of different colors. I'm not gonna cover that today, but having a variety, as you see my leaderboard, is very useful, and it's very common throughout the day that I'll be switching between colors to try to find what's working. The bead is then anchored with either a pegget or a toothpick. Uh, this gets jammed into here and holds. Toothpicks do work great, and I've used them for years, but the new invention of pegets do help protect the light leader that you're going to be using for this system when the bead is moved. The toothpick will sometimes fray or crush that leader. We're gonna anchor that bead about two and a half inches up from the hook. A lot of people are concerned about this and think it might snag fish, but it's actually the opposite. This allows the fish to bite the egg like this and have the hook hooked to the outside of the mouth. It's very, very rare with this setup that you get a fish that takes a hook deep, which is something you do find with flies that have the hook right next to the hook, uh, right next to the bead or the egg imitation. Once we have that pegged, we're going to go up to a clasp. And this, just like a float fishing rig, like you might use a duo snap, is going to be able to clasp onto a swivel, which is on your main leader. This makes switching things really quick really convenient and much better than trying to fumble with blood knots, uh, surgeon's knots or uni knots uh, when you're out on the water and the bite is happening. The snap then just literally clasps onto it. Firm pull, much simpler than tying knots, uh, much less likely to get you in trouble and way faster if you're trying to change out a color of a bead or again a tangled leader. So on a given day out on the water, I, I would pack one of these and it's gonna have a variety of different beads and colors in it. And it also, if you notice, I've got a full tapered leader. If you remembered in an earlier video, we looked at my advanced nymphing rig. This is the exact same leader that I use for bead fishing. And if you're interested in that, check it out in one of the earlier videos. The link will be in the description below. But having this here along with these is going to allow me to troubleshoot all the tangles that happen when we are nymph fishing with eggs, as well as solving the problem of frozen fingers that don't work when you, the bite is on. We developed this rig uh, guiding in the months of October, November, December, January, February. 
It's peak time for egg fishing on our local rivers. Basically any river that's going to have salmon is going to have eggs in it and it's going to have migratory or resident fish that are going to be feeding on them. That could be bull trout, rainbows, uh, cutthroat. And we've even seen this technique of class starting to be adopted by nymph fishermen. They may not have a bead on their rig, but they might build a leaderboard just like this with a bunch of prince nymphs, stoneflies and whatnot, just so they can change out quickly and deal with tangles. So if you'd like more information on this technique, please visit our website at www.pacificangler.ca. Come down to the store, talk to our guys. We all love doing this rig or look into some of our classes and courses. 